Well, staying, uh, well, getting to overseas now, as we noted earlier, the World Bank is predicting a deeper global recession than before, warning poverty and unemployment will rise among developing countries. Well, joining us with his economic outlook is Carl Weinberg. He is chief economist at High Frequency Economics, and Carl publishes the widely read Notes on the Global Economy, which forecasts and analyzes global market activity. And Carl, by the way, if you didn't know this, previously served with the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, otherwise known as the OECD. Okay, Carl. Carl, Hi, Betty. Uh, thanks so much, and uh, good to see you. I don't see you often enough, I feel, so uh, it's good to have you with us. Anyway, okay, so on this World Bank report, uh, a bit different than what the IMF is seeing. The IMF seems a bit more dovish at this stage. I mean, who do you agree with? Well, I think I'm more on the World Bank side, and we're actually more bearish than the World Bank. I mean, we don't calculate a world GDP forecast, but you look at the big components. You look at the U.S., we're probably in the same boat as they are at about minus three. But when you look at Japan, they're talking about uh, maybe 6.8 percent contraction this year, and the economy's already down more than 9 percent year over year, and it's just the first quarter. Mm. We're talking about 10 to 15 percent, a really catastrophic performance for Japan. Wow. And we look at Europe down 4.8% in the uh, in the World Bank's forecast and that's where they are right now. Things are clearly getting worse. So there. what's going wrong with Japan at this moment? I mean, they've, they've implemented stimulus plans. I mean, what's going wrong there? Well, everything is wrong with Japan. They have lingering banking and credit problems dating from the 1980s. Uh, they still haven't recovered from their catastrophic destruction of wealth because they didn't address it as we're doing it right now. Mm -hmm. World trade is imploded and Japan's very dependent upon world trade. We're looking at uh, exports being down 25 30 percent. We're looking at industrial production being down 30, 35 percent for Japan. And of course, autos are very important to Japan also. In the longer term, Japan has a fiscal deficit problem that it cannot solve. Its debt ratio to GDP is going to grow without limit forever. Yeah. So once they get through this business cycle downturn, they still have massive tax hikes and spending cuts that are going to keep them contracting or flat or certainly dismal for a long period of time. And of course, the story doesn't have a happy ending. No, it doesn't. But then, Carl, then if, uh, if we do, in fact, see what you're seeing, which is a 10, per, 10 to 15 percent contraction uh, in Japan. Uh, what does that mean for us? What does that mean for the global economy then? Well, the linkage is primarily through the banking sector. You know, the way this plays out is that as GDP contracts, it raises the ratio of Japan's debt to GDP, and that makes them less credit worthy. And eventually, already people are starting to grok on that idea of, uh, uh, of seeing uh, the debt to GDP ratio rise. It'll be harder for them to finance their bonds. Their yield curves will go up. The price of their bonds will decline. And this presents of financial sector risk, both in the banking sector and in the non-banking financial sector. Insurance companies, pension funds, big pools of money, yeah. we'll see big asset losses. But, but I'm thinking, what about their U.S. Treasuries that they hold, though? Well, they hold about $577 billion worth of U.S. Treasuries at last count. That's a lot. They're unlikely to have to dump them at once. They'll probably continue to dump them at the rate they have been over the last three or four years, which is about $30, $40 billion a year. Mm -hmm. That's a minor negative for the U.S. Treasury market in this world, where uh, capital flows that are less than a trillion dollars don't really get a lot of attention. But nonetheless, it is a potential negative. I don't think we'll see a catastrophic meltdown where they'll dump them all at once, but they will be net sellers. What about here in the U.S., Carl? Are you a bit more optimistic or no? No, we're still thinking that the U.S. consumer, the U.S. household, still has a lot of increasing in their savings that they have to do uh, in order to pay down their debt. As their savings rate rises, then we see them consuming less. And this is a process that doesn't take just six months since Lehman Brothers or 12 months. Mm -hmm. But this is a multi-year process of consistently rising savings. But you see this as a permanent thing, though, for Americans, a higher savings rate. A higher savings rate is permanent, and that's a really good thing once we get there. The mm. thing is that as we get there and we're increasing our savings rate, that means we're subtracting away from the growth of our consumption expenditures and that'll slow the economy in this transition period. At the end, with a lot of savings, we're really going to be a powerful economy. And that is why you see a stronger green back then. One of several reasons. The rise in the savings has a counterpart. If you look at the big flow of funds in the economy, when savings go up, something else has to adjust. And the most likely thing to adjust, and we're seeing it already, is the current account. As our savings things go up, our current account deficit goes down. And what that means is at, so there'll come a point where there'll be fewer and fewer dollars out there for the world mm. to use as a reserve currency. Mm -hmm. And I think that will then give the U.S. dollar a boost. Uh, and that's kind of a medium to longer term proposition. In the shorter term, well, the short term models of currency are very dollar positive right yeah. now. Interest rates uh, and so forth. Right. And, you know, that's a bit contrary to what we've heard from other economists. But, Carl, we are out of time. So, unfortunately, but great to talk with you. Thanks so much for uh, you, and great to see you. See you, as always. Carl Weinberg, Chief Economist at High Frequency Economics.